One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields with his disciples. And as they walked along, they picked some heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? And in the days of Abathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. And Jesus reminded them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Another time he went to a synagogue and a man with a shriveled hand was there. And the Pharisees were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. And they watched Claire closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man, with a shriveled hand, stand up here in front of everyone. And Jesus turned to the Pharisees. Which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? And they remained silent. Stretch out your hand, he said to the man, and his hand was completely restored. And the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. A word from the Lord in the house of the Lord. Sometimes, when we're listening for God, we hear things we don't want to hear. Poor Eli, or poor Samuel, had to go tell his mentor, the guy he was really close to, Eli, that his family was going to be cursed through eternity because Eli had chosen not to uh, discipline his sons. And they were doing all sorts of terrible things in the community. And the word from God was, I will never forget. And his family will continue to suffer. And Eli had to deliver that word. And I keep reminding us that we need to listen when God speaks to us even when he says things we don't want to hear. Even when he says things we don't want to hear. The Sabbath is something else. My tie, you can't see it, but you'll have to take my word for it. My tie says, and God created, and it shows the heavens and the earth. And it says in the book, he, he worked for six days and then he rested. And that became the Sabbath. And the second commandment is, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And what is a Sabbath? Uh, there's nothing on my calendar that says Sabbath. I mean, there's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But it doesn't say Sabbath anywhere. If you're Jewish, the Sabbath starts at sundown on Friday. No, it starts at sundown on the fifth day of the week. Because Friday didn't exist when they decided that's when the Sabbath started. We brought, Friday's a brand new term. It's only 15, 1800 years old. And the Sabbath is millions of years old or thousands or whatever you want it to be. So the Jews knew first day, second day, third day, and so on. And that's how they decided since God worked six days in a row, it must have been the first six days of the week, right? Well, since he created something on the first day, that's where he had to start. We can reason all and, and, and make logical statements about all sorts of things about the Sabbath. But the Sabbath is a very simple thing. Bishop Robert Hoshibata says, I am to take a Sabbath. No, I'm to take two of them every week. Back to back. So whatever day you're coming to see me, my Sabbath is that day and the next day. <laughs> if you came yesterday, it was yesterday. And it, you know. The Sabbath is about something different. It's not about a particular day. It's not about a particular uh, worship service. It's about being different, and it's about taking time to be holy, taking time to have time for God in your life. 
most of us, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump out on a limb here, all of us have trouble having a whole day Sabbath. We're not good at that kind of stuff. But I challenge you to find an hour Sabbath in your week. And I don't care what day it is. Paul even wrote to the church at, at Philippi and said, let not one man's Sabbath cause another man pain. And we shouldn't argue about whether the Sabbath is Saturday or Sunday because they didn't exist when we started having Sabbath. So you've got to put things in perspective. No, what's important is that for it to be a Sabbath, it needs to be a time just for you and for God. And if it's a minute, that's hardly enough. But if it's an hour, that's wonderful. If it's a day, that's unbelievable. Because I, I know very few people who can spend a whole day being holy. Oh, that's a long day. A long day. And the Jews said that you can't do anything on the Sabbath. Now, the disciples and Jesus were walking through the wheat field, so they grabbed off a few heads of wheat. Any of you live on a farm? Remember? <laughs> Blow away the chaff, pop them in your mouth, and chew on them. Good stuff. And the, and the Pharisees went nuts. It, wasn't, it was okay to eat. You can eat on the Sabbath, but you can't pick the grain on the Sabbath. Because it said, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. It didn't say you can't do anything. It says keep it holy. Keep it as a reference to God. Keep it in a special place in your life. They weren't laboring. They were eating. But because man took the Ten Commandments and blew them up into 700 laws, we make some, some things that are so natural become so unnatural. And like he said, is it right to do good on the Sabbath or to do evil on the Sabbath? If something needs doing, is not doing it not an evil act? Should we? Should you? I get, I get to point fingers now. Should you do something holy this week. See, you can't make me have a Sabbath on Sunday because I'm already working. <laughs> so I got to get two other days off this week somewhere. Let's see, which two? And it isn't a matter of taking time off from a job. It isn't a matter of, of going off by yourself in some holy place and, and being away from everybody. It's about being close to God. If you can sit at your kitchen table with a cup of coffee and even spend a few minutes, just you and God, let him speak to you. Let him plant thoughts in your heart. That's what a Sabbath is. A Sabbath is something totally different. It's a separation of your daily duties and what's holy. So it's not about not doing any work. For some people work, who work with their minds all week to do something with their hands that is repetitive, can be just as holy, just as relaxing, just as soothing, just as making them as, as aware of anything else, of being one with God in that moment. Yeah, we ought to keep the Sabbath. We ought to keep it holy. If you could do it for a day, boy, I admire you. I run out of things to talk about God if I tried to do it all day. Oh, the, the calendar drives us because it designates days for certain things. I've got go see the VA practitioner on Tuesday and I got to see another doctor on Wednesday. I hate those things. But we live by a calendar because we live with each other. 
But there ought to be room on the calendar for blank spaces where you can be one with God. And that's what the Sabbath is all about. Yeah, by law, the Jews could do no work on, on the Sabbath, Shabbat. We used to take our confirmation class to a, uh, or, or a Jewish temple in Fond du Lac. And the rabbi would have his kitchen door open when we got there on Saturday. And I would walk in and he would point to the keys to the church or to the temple on his kitchen table. And I would pick the keys up and I, we would walk across a little area to the door of the temple. I would unlock the door. I would open the door. I would turn on the lights because he could do no work. He could not labor because that was the holy day, the Sabbath day. But he was more than willing to talk and tell us all sorts of things. And when he, demonstrated, when he showed us the ark with the Torah in it on the, you know, on the scroll, my confirmands had to open the ark and take the scroll out, being reminded often, don't touch it, don't touch it, just the handle, don't touch it. Because if you put a finger on the scroll, that spot had to be cut out and a new piece put in. And if it was, there was lettering on it, it had to be re-lettered by a scribe. Because to have touched it by these goy fingers would have sullied the word. You see, the, the, the law kills us. It doesn't free us. The Sabbath, as they pronounced it, restricts us. The Sabbath, as God calls us, sets us free. Free to be one with him. Free to be only with him, even for a brief moment. And as you do it for a brief moment, those moments get, get longer, more satisfying, more wonderful. Can you imagine what a wonder it was to the disciples on the night they sat with him and have him talk with them? I'm sure they were like other people. They talked about a lot of different things. But at the beginning of the meal, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you, that you may be made whole in me. And likewise, he said, as he lifted the cup, Unless you're willing to try to be just like I am, you can't drink from this cup. Unless you're willing to be just like I am, you cannot have everlasting life. Oh, he said it if you, unless you drink from my cup. But he didn't mean this goblet or any other goblet. He meant if you weren't willing to be Christ-like, you have no place in his heart. That's what the Sabbath is about. It's about becoming Christ-like. It's about becoming more like Jesus and doing it just you and God. I can preach sermons. You can read books. But unless you're willing to present yourself to God personally, there is no Sabbath. No Sabbath. Let us pray. So our prayer, Lord, that the Sabbath would descend upon us, that we would find those moments then we can be one with you, one with each other, one in ministry to this, your creation, your kingdom here on earth where you've called us to labor. So we've come to be here this day rejoicing in the fact that you've invited us to your feast, invited us to become one with you. So help us to share that invitation with others around us, but also that it really would reach our heart and we could be one with you. But hear us, Lord. Hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen.